I'm not always the best at grabbing my video camera and bringing it out and taping everything I do around here. After the fact, after the guy come and drop the gravel off, I thought, man, that, that would have been a great piece of a video to show him dumping gravel. Tilts his bed up and he has a electronic lock. So he can tilt his bed all the way up, have it chained so his door only opens, what, three, four inches. And then he starts driving forward, flicks a button inside his truck, and the latch opens, which lets his door open. So his bed's already tilted up at a 45. And as soon as that door opens, as soon as he pushes that button, the door opens and he's already moving. The gravel just starts dumping out nice and smooth. It looks like we've got about three inches of this three inch minus gravel for this whole run right here. The first part of the driveway I put in, I had road fabric underneath it through the whole thing and the gravel didn't really sink at all. So I'm going to test this other side out over here and next spring we'll, we'll find out. We'll see how much the gravel sinks into the ground without road fabric. I might end up, if the gravel sinks in too much this year, I'll backplate it and smooth it out where the tire ruts are. And then next year I'll buy some more road fabric and I'll put road fabric down and then like a two inch minus or a inch and a quarter minus rock down over top of that. This three inch or three and a half inch minus whatever, I think it's a three and a half inch. It's a nice base. Most of what I hear around here from anybody that's been here long term is that after five to seven years, 10 years, you're gonna add more gravel anyways. Whether you have road fabric or not, it's gonna sink into the ground slowly but surely. I'm getting better at backblading with my backhoe, getting better at smoothing things out. I do wish my little Ford 8 end tractor worked. I still haven't got around to doing the 12 volt conversion kit for that. It's sitting in my garage. I kept meaning to do it this summer and it just, it never got done. Maybe I'll get to it this fall and this winter. It would be nice to get the Ford 8N tractor running. It's got a nice blade on the back of it. It adjusts three different directions and you can offset the blade. It has three different places the blade can mount to that main part of the tractor, the main part that attaches to the PTO. So it's really a, a nice blade for the back of that and I could really use it for making paths around the yard or making driveways. But I've got to get some time to actually get it running. It does run if I charge the battery. It's got a six volt system. If I charge the battery, it'll run and my multimeter will show that it'll run until the battery runs dead. So the alternator or the generator on it is no good. And I've got the alternator system, the 12 volt conversion sitting in the garage. Like I said, just no time right now to do it. More worried about the house than the driveway, I guess. gravel around here is pretty inexpensive 
most of what you pay for is delivery charge for the gravel. Our area is lucky enough to have huge gravel pits where they mine this gravel out and grind it up into different sizes and ship it out to other counties and other areas that don't have the gravel pits. So we get our gravel, I wanna say it's like 10 bucks a yard for the gravel and it's like 150 bucks to deliver it to my property. The gravel company is coming back out with a full load of inch and a quarter minus. I'm gonna backfill around my house with some dirt to kind of build it up a little bit because it's a little low. And then I'm gonna put this inch and a half or inch and a quarter minus around the house. And that's gonna keep the area around the house with all the snow and the rain coming off the roof. It's gonna keep it from turning into mud so we're not tracking so much mud into the house this winter. Eventually next spring, summer, I'm gonna pour nice concrete walkways around the house, nice patios on the end, and that'll keep the uh, mud down from that point forward, but I just don't have the time to do that this fall. It's starting to cool down. Next week, the highs are gonna be in the 50s. I don't really like to pour concrete unless it's 65 or above, unless you have a way to keep it warm. It just, in my opinion, it doesn't cure quite right. I think this is better than my original plan for a circle driveway. My original plan for circle driveway was gonna go further down there, basically toward my El Camino and circle around. It just didn't leave a lot of room if you have a trailer attached to the back of your truck and you try and make a circle that tight, it's not the easiest thing to do. So after messing around this last year with a truck and trailer in here, I was looking for a a bigger design for a circle driveway and that's where I kind of came up with this path over here which I think works out pretty good. Some gravel turned out nice. Decided against the road fabric for this section. We'll see next spring. We'll see how deep the ruts are. Driving my backhoe over it didn't seem to sink at all. I know it's not wet and muddy but it is pretty thick. The rocks Shoot some spots, I'd say the rock is about five inches thick. The thinnest it's gonna get is about three inches. And then over here where we've driven over it many, many times and packed the dirt down, this area over here. I parked my El Camino there last winter and never had a problem getting it out. And the El Camino is pretty lightweight, but I don't think we'll have a problem right there. Eventually, our driveway is going to come down this direction for some extra parking back down in here where my black tarps is uh, trying to escape. But there'll be a couple spots to park down here, maybe for the kids. My wife will probably use the parking spot where my El Camino is because it's going to kind of pull down toward the house. I'm more than likely always going to park my truck in front of my garage and just walk down to the front of the house. Up where this driveway was going to come through originally, up over here, we're going to plant some trees. I've got a lot of little sapling dug firs out that direction on my property before it gets too late in the year. I want it to cool down some more, but before it gets too late, I'm going to take my back over there and dig up a couple of them that are about two feet tall and I'm gonna transplant them over here. Hopefully they make it. If they don't, I've got plenty more to transplant until some of them do. My extra gravel for going around the house. After I build some more of it up with some dirt, I've gotta scrape some dirt up, probably off the front of the road area out there. I've got plenty of little mounds of dirt out there, so I'll take the backhoe up there and bucket some dirt off of that area, and bring it down around the house, fill it in, smooth it out. And I'll put some gravel over top of it to keep the dirt down or keep the mud down. That's what got done today. More like a daily vlog today. Oh, a lot of work though. And amongst all that, I took the front tire off the backhoe, the one that kept going flat. I'd ordered a tube and it finally came in. So I got the tube put in that tire. 
Got it aired up. We'll see how long it stays aired up. I checked the inside of the tire. I didn't feel anything sharp inside the tire before I put the tube in, but I couldn't tell why that tire was going flat. I've taken it to the tire shop in town. Anytime I've taken it, I've taken it there twice. And they've always said it's a piece of dirt in the bead that was letting the air out. Um, and each time I'd get the tire back from them, I'd put them in the backhoe, and a couple days later, it would be flat again. But they swore they fixed it, so it, it leads me to believe that maybe there's a pinhole somewhere in the tire and they just didn't catch it. So that's why I bought the tube for it, got the tube on it, did this work. We're gonna see how long that tire stays aired up. We also have all this gravel down here with road fabric under it, so it's easy to tear up. This gravel is going away. As soon as we get moved into the house, so we're not driving down here to our little shack over there, I'm gonna take the backhoe and scrape all this gravel and move it up into that center section to keep that from being so muddy. I think there's a whole truckload of gravel right here in this little area. It's really thick in some spots, so we'll have plenty of extra gravel left over. But that's for a future date. Until next time, guys, go make something. <laughs>